Hey everyone, Jeremy here. Um, I just wanted to share with you guys like a uh, technique that I recently used. I drew the picture on the left yesterday and I really liked the style of it. I liked how it turned out. So I thought I'd create another one and in the process kind of walk you guys through um, the technique, what I'm doing. Um, there's not a lot to it. It's really super simple. Um, and I, I really like this, uh, this way of adding color to what would otherwise be like a black and white drawing. Um, so as you can see, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of adding kind of an underpainting uh, behind the charcoal picture directly to the paper. Uh, I'm using Cranston uh, mixed media paper here. So it works really well for accepting like wet media as well as drawings. Um, this is just some acrylic paint that I picked up at Walmart. It's super cheap, doesn't really cost a lot. Um, but yeah, so like uh, it's an easy way to add color to a picture. And as you can see, the, st the, the type of painting I'm doing here is very loose. I'm not even mixing the colors very well uh, just because I kind of want some of that blue to come through with the yellow. Obviously I want it to be green, but if um, different parts of it are like blue and parts of it are yellow, um, that's totally fine. In fact, that's preferred. As you can see in the picture on the left, I kind of left some of the reds in there with the yellows and it creates this kind of texture. And I'm also not going out of my way to kind of blend in the uh, paint. Um, I'm, I'm actually uh, adding streaks of yellow here because I know that that's going to be the highlighted area of the face. I, I already have in my mind uh, what kind of a portrait uh, I'm going to be doing here. But um, yeah, so like parts of it, I leave, um, you know, like really light and parts of it I make kind of dark just to kind of really um, reinforce some of the elements that I'm going to be doing in the drawing part of it. And of course, I'm just like cheating here and uh, like blow drying it so that I don't have to wait forever. Um, yeah, so like the, the, that kind of speeds things up as well. But so the reason why I started doing this is I was kind of getting a little bored with just my black and white drawings that I had been doing. And I didn't really want to introduce a lot of color. Like I didn't want to make like a full color drawing. Um, but I did want to kind of punch it up a little bit and create this mood that you wouldn't normally get with like just black and white. So um, I had seen other people do this and I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, mixing acrylic with uh, charcoal. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, let me let me give that a shot. And I really liked the, how it turned out. It, it, it actually gives a texture to the paper that's really nice for drawing that wasn't already there in the paper itself. I don't know if it's just because there's like more texture from the paintbrush um, on the paper, if acrylic itself is just really good for drawing charcoal uh, on or what's the deal there, but I really liked it. It was, it, it was noticeably different from just drawing in paper. So the actual process for drawing pictures, if you haven't heard me talk before, um, is I kind of use this like relational um, uh, way of uh, like sketching out the picture and finding out where everything's going to be, kind of like a proportional measurement. I start with like just some feature in the face and I kind of build everything off of that. So um, I usually start with like the, the larger objects and kind of move down into like smaller shapes and, and details. But um, typically when doing a portrait, I kind of figure out the frame of the face. So like, you know, what, what different parts might make the edges of the uh, face. And then from those edges, I kind of build in where I think the, the eyes might be, the nose, the lips, the ears, um, the hair. Um, and I always keep it kind of like light at first um, until I kind of figure out where everything is going to be. And then once I kind of feel a little more comfortable uh, where all the different facial features are, then I come in and kind of darken things up and add more shadows and so on. So as you can see, that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm trying to figure out where the light might be based off of that yellow streak that I had put in in the underpainting. Um, that's kind of my um, waypoint for figuring out where the highlights are going to be of the face. So based on that, I'm able to kind of sketch in some of the other details and, and figure out where things are. Um, but again, like I said, the, for some reason, the 
the paint on the paper just creates this like uh, really great drawing surface. Um, it, it's a lot different than just uh, drawing in charcoal on paper. Uh, it, it felt um, more, uh, more textured and I really like how the charcoal lays over it. And uh, I, I'm definitely gonna do this more in the future. I, again, I was getting bored of just doing black and white pictures and I know I could have gone out and gotten some tone paper, but that's just like another shade of gray. I, I didn't really wanna do that. Like I didn't want like a neutral color. I really wanted to do these more bold uh, colors and you know, like when when that's not out there available to you, just kind of make your own. And I like this better because um, some of that texture shows through, the variations in color show through. You're not going to find that in tone paper, um, and, and it's not going to create the kind of style that these two pictures are are evoking. And also, you know, color is is a big deal. Uh, color creates different moods. I, I'm not really sure what moods I was going for here. I was just trying to uh, do a warm color and then maybe a, a, like a, this is still kind of a warm greenish color, but uh, it's, it's definitely cooler than the uh, orange. I, I think I was just going for something that might look good on camera next to the orange, and that's why I picked green. But, um, so I'm not really sure what what mood I'm trying to evoke here, but it certainly does evoke a mood, uh, more so than what a black and white charcoal picture would. Um, black and white charcoal often just kind of feels like, um, kind of like a dark, atmospheric, moody, rainy day. I, I feel like there's a lot more um, story here uh, by a introducing color. Like the one on the left, I can uh, easily imagine being like a uh, like a morning morning sun coming through the uh, the window or something like that. The one on the right, I'm not really sure. I you know it's green. I can't I can't figure out if she's out in nature or if this is just like um, you know maybe at night or something and uh, light from a neon sign or something is reflecting off of her. I'll let you guys decide. You guys can make up whatever story you want. But the point is, introducing color gives it that different dimension and um, really uh, really allows you to tell more story than you could with just a simple black and white. So um, what I'm spraying on here is actually uh, acetone. It's, it's basically nail polish remover. And what that does is it kind of creates an additional layer of um, texture. It kind of creates this blotting, uh, blotchiness. And I, I really like that. I did that in the first one, and I liked how it made some areas of it uh, get this new texture. So I, I, I did that in this portrait as well. And the other uh, side benefit is it kind of locks that charcoal into the paper, um, which is great because it, it's basically, it, it's not going to do the same job as Fixant uh, does. Um, Fixant is kind of like permanent and like really locks your charcoal in. Um, but, you know, this is kind of like a, um, like a, a fixant light. It, it blends the charcoal into the paper. It fixes it to the paper. Um, you could probably run your hand over it and you're not going to get that much charcoal in your hand from it. But also it creates this kind of neat texture, which is what I was going for. But with the basic uh, shape of the face there and the basic features in, now I'm coming in and I'm adding more shadow and some more detail um to kind of like flesh it out a little bit uh the, the picture on the right is slightly different than the one on the left i don't know which one i like more um the one on the right is a little more refined i was really just trying to get a sketch in on the picture on the left i was really just trying to work with color so it's not like i was um paying a lot of attention to detail in the face on the right side i kind of went the other way i'm, I'm trying to refine some of the shapes as you can see, the eye is more defined there. Um, I'm really working on these shadows a little bit more, sketching them in, kind of like just hatching them in. Um, I've got kind of a loose drawing style. Uh, one would say a bad drawing style, but that's fine. It, it, I'll take the criticism. I'm, I'm still learning and I'm still working on my uh, drawing technique, but um, I definitely favor um, style over uh, details. So like, I, I'm not going to sit there and draw every individual eyelash. I'm just going to kind of like hatch in, uh, like the impression of eyelashes. Same with the, uh, the eyebrows here, but already it's starting to look a little bit more refined. Um, I really like these time lapses because you can kind of see it a lot quicker. 
than the entire drawing process. I think this took me about an hour to do uh, from painting, letting it dry, speeding it up with the uh, hair dryer, obviously. Um, but actually sketching in everything, it took me about an hour. It probably could could have gone a lot faster if I was like less concerned about making a, a really refined picture. So I would I would argue that this is a really, really cool effect that anyone can do. As you can see, it's really simple. You just put in streaks of color behind your charcoal picture. And what I like about it is it kind of it kind of feels like you're painting um well drawing on a on a wall, like a stone wall that had been painted and you know like it's lost some of the color over the years. It's kind of faded. Streaks of uh I don't know like acid rain has washed away it or, or something like that. But it's kind of a cool, um, cool style. I like it. I'm probably going to do a lot more of it in the future. Um, I've been trying it with these uh, portraits, but I, I think I'm going to apply it to my my uh, pet portraits as well. Uh, I think very soon I'm going to try to do a uh, dog portrait with some uh, background color um, as well. But uh, so some of the differences between how you would do a black and white charcoal picture and how you would do um, a charcoal picture over like an underpainting or even toned paper is the process is that you normally draw uh, your charcoal and then you use um, like a, a kneadable eraser to kind of lift some of that, um, that charcoal up. So you have your, your heavy tone, uh, heavy shadows that you do really dark with the charcoal. And then it kind of moves into these like lighter tones that, you know, you're not applying so much charcoal and then you use like a kneadable eraser to actually lift up the, um, the charcoal to reveal highlights uh, because your paper is white. It, it works, right? Um, so the difference here is because you have toned paper, whether it's, you know, painted or otherwise, um, you come back in and you actually add your highlights with um, either either white charcoal or white pastel. It, it doesn't even have to be white. Like I was looking at this um, after I was done and I could have easily done these highlights in another color, like a um, like a pastel pencil of maybe yellow or um, maybe even a light blue or, or something like that. There's a lot of flexibility there, but I, I went with the traditional white because I really liked how it looked in my picture I did ye uh, yesterday. Um, so I was trying to see if I could consistently create a another picture of that type. So I went with white. Um, here I've got this really small stubby uh, white charcoal pencil, um, but the one on the left, I think I actually did with the, um, the white uh, pastel stick which I'll be using here in a moment because I think my the, the lead on my pencil actually breaks off here. It, it's a terrible pencil. Like it's so soft that it, every time you sharpen it, uh, it breaks off and then you end up with this little stubby pencil, but it is nice. It, it's a, uh, it's kind of a soft white charcoal. So it works really well over the acrylic underpainting and um, just adding these highlights really start to uh, redefine the uh, the drawing. Um, it, it makes it softer. Um, it gives it this like level of finish that it wouldn't otherwise have. Uh, this is the type of stuff that I find difficult to uh, duplicate when I'm just working on white paper with charcoal. Um, I come in with the kneaded eraser and I can't get that kind of like level of detail on the highlights that I can there, there's where my uh, pencil lead broke. And uh, I think, yeah, I switched to uh, using a stick of uh, white pastel instead. But anyway, I couldn't get this level of detail working with a kneadable eraser. I know that you can get like a fine eraser. Um, I just don't have one. So I, I really like being able to use the white um, pencil to uh, do highlights here. Uh, and as you can see, it's a little bit more refined than the one on the left because of the one on the left, I think I just used a white stick. But yeah, I, so I don't know. I, I don't know if I was going for She-Hulk here, but uh, it definitely evokes that. But I, I really think the green kind of just brings a different mood to it. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide what sort of mood is being conveyed here. Uh, maybe you guys can 
chime on and chime in in the comments below what you think each of these pictures stories are um i was just trying to create portraits but i i really do feel like there's a story for each of these i just don't know what they are so maybe you guys can help me with that maybe you can comment below and let me know what is the story behind each of these uh pictures because they are even though they're in the same using the same techniques very similar style i think the one on the left is a little bit rougher than the one on the right um i, I feel like there's a story to be told there so you guys let me know but i i think it's very cool i, th I wanted to share hopefully you guys think the same um you know and whenever whenever you're done with the painting you peel that tape back and it's so satisfying to see that white border there and it kind of just really hammers home um this this painting is done and i love it all right so that's all i've got to uh share today um uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this hopefully it inspires you guys to do something similar again if you go and look at my black and white charcoal pictures and compare it to these um these colored pictures it's like apples and oranges i really do feel strongly that um, this type of technique for adding color to an otherwise boring black and white uh, charcoal picture uh, and there's no reason why it has to be acrylics it could be watercolor it could be whatever paint of your choice whatever color of your choice uh, but you know try try color it, it definitely uh, takes your picture to a, a whole nother level so Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you liked it, uh, be sure to uh, like. And if you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe so that I can create more content like this, bring it to you in the future. I'm going to try to do more educational, um, uh, instructional videos like this. Uh, whenever I come across a technique that I enjoy, I'm going to share it with you guys. So hopefully you guys like this one. Hopefully it inspires you guys to uh, do one of your own. So if you do, make sure you share it with me so, so that I know that, um, you know, something I did was uh, helpful. So until next time, have a good one. Bye.